All right. Let's talk about focus on Salesforce key platform best practices. So, as you implement Salesforce onto your nonprofit organizations, here are a few key points you want to keep in mind. First, protect your data with a security strategy. So, during implementation, you would want to plan this really well. Security strategy of like levels of data access, who gets the login, also who gets to see what, who gets to change what data, and who has access to this part of the information, who doesn't get the access to that part of the information all of that are totally customizable in salesforce so this is pretty confusing personally for me as i implement salesforce um, well i am not the one who, who was implementing it as i was using salesforce um, security is a particular area you need to really understand how it works. So this is just an overview. We are not actually going to discuss it in depth, but we had discussed it in depth on my administrator trails that I made. So I have um, admin beginner, admin intermediate, and admin advanced trailhead videos. Feel free to uh, go through them. There are like over a hundred videos for those and we had discussed in depth on um, security including access. So the organization like for your whole Salesforce org you can maintain a list of authorized users and then set your password policies, limit logins to certain hours and locations, the network, the IP address, who can log in and so on and so forth. And then the objects, who can see what, right? What about the accounts object? Maybe you want to assign a particular group or team to manage your certain account types um, and other team to manage other account types. So you can manage and um, Manage that using record types in accounts or any other objects. Also fields, maybe you have um, so many fields, but not everyone has access to it or some maybe can read information, but cannot change the information. Some um, users having higher access levels can read and write the information. You can also assign that. We can do that um, through permission uh, permission sets, through profiles, and yeah, we've, we have discussed in depth as well. As well for the records itself, who can view the records um, and then what kind of information they can view. So you can set this up using the organization wide defaults or OWD. And then you can also set it up using role hierarchies like like the president of the organization, the vice president, and then directors, managers, you know, assistant managers, staff, and, and so on and so forth. And you can also define your sharing rules. So it's all very customizable. Keep that in mind. That is all you need to know at this point. Everything is super customizable. So you can define it however you want it to be set up, all right? So you can use user profiles. For example, a marketing user, user profile, system administrator, executive management, fundraising and development, office staff, program staff, volunteer. So you can set up um, many user profiles and then you can assign users to this user profile. So maybe Jimmy is a system administrator and you are a system administrator. System, system administrator is the super user, meaning they will have access to everything. 
or you can also customize it maybe a junior system administrator or yeah something like that and then you can take away access by first cloning the system administrator user profile and then modify it on the the new one and name it junior sysadmin something like that so it's totally customizable that is all you need to know for now let your requirements guide your customization see it's not the other way around so you first define your requirements on a on a piece of paper um you know you have your meeting with the executive with the, with the management and you you decide on a piece of paper like okay this um, level of um, management has access to this this and that and then you just draw it out on a on a plan and then you customize it based on what you want or what you need right any kind of customization that you want salesforce can implement it and npsp can implement it for sure okay so with salesforce you can also automate your organizational processes there is a bunch of automation available for you to use approval processes um, process builder workflow rules flows these are basically the 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 power tools so to speak that you can use to to automate the whole process in your organization you know, um, I'm not sure what to mention because the examples are pretty much unlimited. Anything that you want to automate, you can do so with, with the tools that are available with Salesforce. And then, build, test, and train in a sandbox. So, you will have a sandbox that you can create. So... On your Salesforce org, you can create sandboxes to build customizations and then you can test it there and then you can also train new staff in a sandbox so nothing will break, right? So when you're building new processes, always, always, always build it in a sandbox and then test it when everything is super good, super solid, then you can deploy it into your production org or the real org that everybody uses in the real world scenario. And then that's what you use, a sandbox. So you can um, have um, a number of sandboxes in your Salesforce license, depends on what kind of license you have. So that's pretty much it. Empower users and shepherd adoption. Yes, rolling out is Oh, it's going to take time. We're always going to take time. So don't rush anything, especially when your staff and your users are already uh, accustomed to using the previous CRM or a system that your organization is already using. It may take a few months even, you know, for uh, for the new for your staff to adapt to the new ways of doing thing in Salesforce, but. Once they are getting the hang of it, it'll be a smooth ride and an and, uh, and enjoyable ride. All right, so, so you have to plan your pre-rollout and your post-rollout steps. Please read through this. We are not going to uh, discuss it one by one. It's pretty straightforward. And that's pretty much it. Let's do the quiz together. In the language of Salesforce, which terms refers to an isolated copy of your production organization used for testing apps and configuration? We just talked about it. It's a sandbox. True or false? The only way to automate an organizational process in Salesforce is by writing custom code. False. So you don't have to be a programmer or a, a software developer or a coder to automate, automate things in Salesforce. You can use process builder and then um, approval process, workflow rules, flows. You just need to have a solid logic in your mind. As long as you understand logic, what makes sense 
as long as you have common sense, you can automate stuff. It's easy. I think personally the hardest thing for a human to learn is to learn how to read and write. If you can read and you can write, you can pretty much learn everything you want to learn. Bada bing, bada boom. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom. Thank <laughs> you.